Hello and welcome to Apache Kafka tutorial at Learning Journal. We have been creating producers in our earlier sessions. So far, we have covered almost every aspect of Kafka producer. In this session, we will conclude our discussion about Kafka producers. In Kafka, almost everything is controlled using configurations. In our earlier examples, we used four configuration parameters. Three of them were mandatory and fourth parameter was for custom partitioner. Let me recap all of them. The first parameter bootstrap server is a list of Kafka broker URL and port number. Since it is mandatory, so we must have at least one value is specified for this parameter. The value that we provide for this parameter is used by the producer to connect to Kafka cluster. Without this value, the producer cannot reach to the cluster. You should provide at least two addresses because if the first broker is down, the producer should reach out at the second address. If you have a large cluster, you can provide more than two addresses. There is no harm in providing three to four addresses. The second parameter is a key serializer. This parameter takes the name of the class that you want to use for serializing your key. The third parameter is a value serializer. This parameter takes the name of the class that you plan to use as a value serializer. You can use the same class for both key and value. If your key and value both are strings, you can use the same serializer for both. However, if you are sending record or an object using the same serializer for both key and value doesn't make any sense. The last one is partitioner class. So if you are using a custom partitioner, you should specify your class name for this parameter. We have already used all of these parameters, so I'm sure that you learned them already. The Kafka producer provides many configuration parameters. The complete list of producer parameter is available in Kafka documentation. Most of the parameters have a reasonable default value. So there is no need to customize many of them. I recommend that you check the documentation and read all of them at least once. We have excellent documentation and most of them are straightforward. I will cover three important parameters in this session because they have a direct impact on reliability and performance of Kafka. Remember that these are producer configurations. So you can set these configurations using properties just like you are setting bootstrap server or partitioner class. The effect of setting these properties is at the producer level, not at the topic level or server level. Now let's start with the first configuration. The AX configuration. The AX configuration is to configure acknowledgements. When producer sends a message to Kafka broker, they get a response back from the broker. The response is a record metadata object or an exception, right? So this parameter AX, it can take three values, 0, 1 and all. If we set it to zero, the producer will not wait for the response. It will send the messages over the network and forget it. There are three side effects of X being zero. Possible loss of messages, high throughput and no retries. Since producer is not waiting for a response, there is no guarantee that the server has received the record. So you may lose some records. However, since the producer is not waiting for an acknowledgement, it can send data as fast as the network can support and achieve high throughput. The third side effect is that the producer will not even go for a retry. Kafka is a highly available system, so there is a slim possibility that you lose your record. However, understand that there is no guarantee. So use this setting when loss of few messages is not an issue. This setting will provide you the highest possible throughput. If we set X to 1, 
the producer will wait for the response however the response is sent by the leader so this parameter will have an impact on when the leader will send the response in this case the leader will respond after recording the message in its local storage if the leader is down and message delivery fails the producer can retry after few milliseconds this option appears to be a safe choice however there is a catch you still can't guarantee that you will not lose your message you might be wondering how i can lose the record if it is received at the leader well you can that is because we have a single copy of the message we are not sure that it is replicated what if leader crashes you will lose some message correct replicators are fast they replicate it quickly however if the leader breaks before replica could make a copy the message will be lost surprisingly in such scenario the message can be lost even after successful acknowledgement the chance of losing your record is thinner than the earlier option but it is not a reliable option if you want to achieve 100% reliability it is necessary that all replicas in the isr list should make a copy successfully before the leader sends an acknowledgement that is where the all setting works if we set ax parameter to all the leader will acknowledge after it receives an acknowledgement from all of the live replicas this option gives you a highest reliability but costs you the highest latency the all setting is the slowest option because you will be waiting for all replicas however you can achieve better throughput using asynchronous send now the next parameter the parameter retries is a simple one it defines how many times the producer will retry after getting an error the default value is 0 there is another parameter retry dot back off dot ms that controls the time between two retries the default value for this parameter is 100 milliseconds the next parameter is max in flight requests per connection This one is crucial and often less understood. Let me try to explain it. If you are using asynchronous send with a callback function to check your errors, you are not waiting for a response, but you ultimately get the response using a callback function. So do you know how many such messages you can send without waiting for a response? The question is how many in flight requests are allowed that are still not acknowledged that's the number defined by max in flight requests per connection setting this parameter to a high value will increase memory usage but at the same time it will increase throughput as well so if you have enough memory you may want to set it to a higher value to achieve better performance of an asynchronous send there is a side effect of asynchronous send let's assume you sent 10 requests for same partition five of them were sent as a first batch and they failed remaining five goes as a second batch and succeed now the producer will retry the first batch and if it is successful you lose your order that's a significant side effect of asynchronous send so be careful if the order of delivery is critical for you if you are looking for an ordered delivery of your messages you have following two options use synchronous send or set max in flight requests per connection to 1 both of these options have the same result The order is critical for some use cases especially transactional systems for example banks and inventory if you are working on that kind of use case set max in flight requests per connection to 1 there are few more important properties i recommend checking kafka documentation for at least following properties all of these properties are relatively straightforward 
However, if you have any doubts, you can reach out to me for clarification by posting a comment. The primary objective of this session was to understand the ordering guarantees of Kafka. You should have a fair idea by now that you can preserve the order in a Kafka partition, but it comes at the cost of throughput. That's it for this session. In the next video, we will start exploring Kafka consumers. Thank you for watching Learning Journal. See you again. Keep learning and keep growing.